Again, Warriors fans, I'm Scott Warris, and we are here inside the Rex speaking with the NAC Women's Track Athlete of the Week, Anna Rosh, for her performance last weekend at UW-Milwaukee at the Panther Tune-Up. Specifically, i got to give the numbers here, Anna, real quickly so that the folks at home know why we're sitting here and talking the way we are. In the uh, 400 meter, you had a personal best time. You had the conference's top time, uh, finishing in second place in that one. And then you ran the second leg of the 4x400 four meter relay. It was the fourth fastest time in the conference this year. Okay, with all that said, first of all, congratulations. Thank Thanks you. for giving us the time. Just take us back to the weekend. Take us through both of those events and why things went so well for you uh, at the Clatchy Center. Um, well, for my open four, mm -hmm. I knew that we were in, there was um, a couple fast girls in my heat, and when you're in a fast heat, you usually run faster, so I knew that was going to be a good part of the weekend. So pre just preparing for that, just focusing on my start has been a big thing that we've been working mm -hmm. on, especially with those tight curves at UWM. So we had done some practice on that the week before, so I was just trying to really focus on leaning into the curve and being able to attack the first part of my race and then hopefully um, being able to have that energy mm -hmm. to carry it home and across the finish line. Well, let me ask you, you said something interesting there. You said you knew you had some fast runners in your heat. Yeah. So like, you know, in other sports, they scout the other team mm -hmm. and things like that. How do you scout the other team, the other runners in, in track? Um, we usually will have our heat sheets come out, so mm. it'll say who, um, what runners are in your heat and then what their times are or like what their season's like best time is. That that's usually the one that they'll take. And then they have it all listed, so I knew going into it that there was a girl that was about running another 59, mm -hmm. and I think another girl at a 59, so two girls at 59, and then one was at like 101-ish. Okay. So I knew that there was gonna be people to push me. Are, are there some runners though? You know, you compete, you see same names, and you see yeah. familiar faces. I imagine you know some of these based on prior matchups too, mm -hmm. just knowing yeah. personalities and scouting reports, and I know her, I know her, okay, yeah. I can maybe get her there, or this one, right? Yeah, um, there were two last year from, I think, Concordia, Chicago, mm -hmm. which they're gone now, <laughs> but they were always, um, always had um, first place, always went mm -hmm. to the nationals. But there was a girl who was in front of me I knew from last year too, so I kind of knew that okay. like, this was going to be a good race. She was going to like pull me and push me to go faster and that she was in my heat. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, you also mentioned in your first answer about uh, the track inside the Clatchy Center at UW-Milwaukee and, mm -hmm. and it's, it's smaller track, tight mm -hmm. corners. So how do you as a runner have to adjust from a, a, a longer track where you have maybe a little bit more, um, you know, width to hit those corners? Um, well, we practice there, so my coach had us doing just like repeated um, block starts on those curves, so just being able to tilt your block when mm. you start so you're already leaning into the curve right away. Okay. So that's supposed to make it easier on your ankles going around those, even if they are super sharp, and then just being able to like come off of the curve and just get into the middle of your lane mm. so it's more comfortable of a run. Okay, so that was the work you did to uh, get a personal best time in the 400. Now, the 4x400 relay, you ran the second leg, and it was a great performance by the entire squad. We were talking off the air a little bit here. Of, of the four legs in your running career, have you run them all? Is there, um, is there one or two you have yet to, to run in? I believe now that I've done first, second, and fourth okay. leg total. So you ran the second leg. Yes. How was the second leg differentiated from the others? Um, second leg is kind of like you have your first who's going to be like that good starter off the blocks mm -hmm. and then you've got your middle and then you've got um, the person following up with the end. Second leg is kind of just in the middle, just keeping that endurance, keeping okay. the pace and the spot where you're at. And if you can make a move, that's perfect to just get that in um, like that beginning early mm -hmm. part of the race then two so you're in a good spot for the um, last part of the mm -hmm. race now being the layman that i am <laughs> i have to ask is there more uh, is there one leg in your opinion that has more pressure because i think well it has to be the last leg because mm -hmm. it's, it's 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 all on you if you're down to come back but the first leg as yeah. well you want to set a good tone and set a good pace but then i started thinking well, shoot, the second and third yeah. legs, you don't want to let the first and the fourth one down. Mm -hmm. So is there one that's more pressure packed than another, or is it all pretty much the same when you think about it? <laughs> all super important, obviously. Yeah. Everyone yeah. plays a role. But um, 
Running them, for me, it's dependent on, like, who you're running against. Like, if you know that this team has a really strong, like, first runner, I might mm. get moved sometimes um, based on that. So running in first as the first runner has been a lot of pressure because I always feel like, you know, coming if I come into cross the finish line in first place, mm -hmm. we have a chance to hold that for the rest of the time. Or if I come in this third place, we're probably going to hold that for the rest of the mm -hmm. time. And then receiving it in fourth, it's pressure if you're really close to people, but then sometimes your team has already gotten you to that ideal spot, so you just kind of um, finish it strong and stuff. Is the fourth leg really the glory leg? That's what a lot of people look at. That's it what as. I always hear yeah. people say. I mean, that's do you, the do you one believe that, home. or is that a little overblown? Um, I think it gets um, looked at as that way because you're the one who's um, getting that final time, crossing the finish line, and um, solidifying that mm -hmm. spot. But, I mean, obviously everyone has worked to put you where you are, and that's good to remember, too. The teamwork that, I'm going to hang on the relay for a second longer, the teamwork that goes into it. I mean, we've spent the last couple of moments talking about the individual legs and the individual responsibilities, yeah. but how, how do you as a team prepare for that event? Um, well, me and um, Ashley, we've um, trained together because of our schedule, so mm -hmm. it's been two, just the two of us for a lot of our practices. So we're able to push each other in practices. Um, we understand each other's speed and the paces. And then receiving the baton, so the handoffs are yeah. uh, like the part that makes it cohesive. So just practicing, like, is she going to come in at a really fast time? Or is she going to be, you know, it's going to be a little bit more winded. And then just knowing um, who you're receiving the baton mm -hmm. to helps the race in like total. Is that handoff more difficult than maybe the, the, the regular fan like me sitting in the stands watching realizes? Is that more difficult? Um, it's less difficult than the blind handoff where you just shoot your arm back because this point. one it's three steps you turn your body so it's um, easier between the two but it just kind of depends like you just really have to read how the person is mm -hmm. coming in like if they're coming in tired you're gonna slow your um, three steps before you turn around or if they're coming in fast, you're going to take off earlier. So it's just kind of mm. being able to do that so it goes smoothly. All right, before we have a little fun here, Anna Rosh is the NAC Women's Track Athlete of the Week. Um, conference indoor championships mm -hmm. coming up this weekend in Stevens Point, hosted by Lakeland University. What events will you be partaking in as we follow uh, your team performance this week? And give us a little preview, if you could, of... Uh, of the championship. Yeah, sure. So I think we're all going to go up on Friday. Mm -hmm. I won't have anything that day. It's usually field events or like the hub. So Saturday I'll do the open four and then I'll do like the last total event, which is the four by four. So it's just kind of uh, staying loose for those mm -hmm. times. It's um, a good opportunity to get to cheer on your teammates on Friday because I won't have anything going on. And then doing the same on Saturday, but getting like in the zone of being able to run my races too. What do you do to get in the zone? Do, um, you, do, do you have like a superstition or, or any kind of, do you eat the same breakfast before <laughs> a, a, a competition or stuff like that? Is there anything little you do? Um, I used to a lot more <laughs> before. I think it changes with time. Like yeah. I think- You're I'm, a veteran now. <laughs> yeah. You're a veteran now. Um, usually it's just like um, a bagel for sure, but when you're traveling and stuff, there's going to be hotels, so you kind of just have to go with the flow, <laughs> see what they have. If they That's have fair. the toast, cinnamon rolls, okay. muffins, you just need to load up because food is fuel and it'll take you through. Carbo load? Yeah. Is it, are, so carbs a good thing then mm -hmm. on race day? Um, uh, night before. Night before, okay. Usually try to get your water in mm -hmm. and then eat your noodles, whatever you have. If okay. you don't, it's not the end of the world, but... <laughs> Yeah, it's trying to stay loose with that. All right, Anna, and she's a senior. She, uh, she's tried it all, and it's worked very <laughs> successfully for her. Okay, Anna Rosh, I hold in my hand two cards. Each card has a theme to the questions. Pick the card. I will ask you the questions. Okay. Okay, you've chosen holidays. This is just overall holidays throughout the course of the year. First answer that comes to mind, all right, Anna? Okay. A real Christmas tree or a fake artificial Christmas tree? Uh, real. Mm hmm the one side dish at Thanksgiving you cannot live without? Um, potatoes and gravy. Okay, very good. Harder to fathom, okay? Harder to fathom. A giant rabbit hiding eggs or a fat man coming down a chimney to give presents. Which is harder uh, to fathom? 
I might do the giant bunny. Okay, giant bunny hiding eggs. Yeah. Hard to picture in real life. <laughs> fireworks on the 4th of July or a snowfall on Christmas Eve? I like fireworks. Mm -hmm. What New Year's resolution have you kept the longest? Uh, I think I probably put something super basic like drinking more water. Okay. So. That, not that, a hard one. That's, but it's doable. Yeah. Like a lot of people pick New Year's resolutions. I impossible. They're never going to keep it. Yeah. That's doable. Yeah. That's reasonable. All right. Anna, your wild card question is who in your athletic career has impacted you the most to this point in your career? Um, I would say my high school track coach. He was also uh, my um, chemistry okay. or biology um, You want to give him a shout out? Well. Oh uh, yeah, um, Professor Vassal. Okay. Um, he was always having me try so many different things in high school. I think I did long jump, one, two, four by one, four by four. Wow. Everything but the open four was what was going on. But doing my four by fours, he would always time me and say, you drop a second, let's drop another second. And I didn't really know what that meant. I had a lot of energy back mm -hmm. then. But he was always super supportive in everything I did and understood my limits, but still, um, really push me to do my best mm -hmm. every single time. Oh, that's great. And Arash, hoping for all the best this weekend at the NAC Indoor Championships. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Stay healthy and keep it going. Okay. Thanks for watching, everybody. WLCSports.com.